And this is a question that I get asked a lot and actually comes as a surprise to many people who are just getting started with interactive installations. So let me read out this question. So is it possible to have a very short introduction of why it could be interesting to use a web page to control touch designer, a simple GUI like Notch does, and vice versa. For example, connecting a cables, GL scene, or node red. So this is a really good question because I think when we see the marketing for a lot of installations, obviously marketing is going to have a spin. You know, we're no saint in this game either. When we put out marketing stuff, we put a spin on it. And a lot of times when you see these touch designer installations running, you assume that everything is happening inside a touch designer, which in some cases may be true. But the reality is in a lot of other situations, and I would almost say most situations, there's a lot of pieces to these big puzzles for these projects, especially when it comes to permanent installations. Because permanent installations come with a sense of ownership that needs to happen. And for most people that I know, the touchdown developer doesn't want to be the one to own this thing after it's done. Our goal is to get it done and then hand it off to somebody else, whether it's the people in charge of the building the permanent installation is, or if they're in charge of the public space, or if there's some kind of agency or brand, usually the, the practice is to hand this off to somebody else and then they basically run it, they own it, they control it, whatever they wanna do from there is at their own leisure and, and discretion. And this is where web pages come in because there's a lot of good reasons why you'd want to consider using a web page to control touch designer or any kind of application, the web, making that front end web friendly or web based has a lot of advantages. One of them is that web pages can be accessed from just about anywhere. And this is a big one because let's say, for example, we didn't use any web. We were going to have touch designer run the whole thing, have it be the control option that the owners of the project have to use. Well, if we think about our own experience with touch designer, this usually means that there's a server room and somebody has to go into the server room and there's like a little rack mounted monitor that flips open and it's got a little keyboard and mouse and they, they have a little UI there that we've built either ourselves or with widgets. But essentially this has to be a computer that runs Touch Designer. So if they wanted to run this UI from their own computer, either that UI computer that they're gonna run needs to have, be able to run Touch Designer decently. Maybe they try and remote into the system like AnyDesk or TeamViewer to then control that system. And these things can all be a drag because how many times have you tried to run Touch Designer on an Ultrabook? It is not, it works. I'll, I'll say it works. I, I do it frequently, but it is not the best case scenario, right? And then you have to be careful about like dependencies. And if that is this an enterprise, they're probably going to be changing laptops often. Do people need to keep reinstalling Touch Designer? It creates a lot of extra headaches that you don't really want to deal with. Whereas a web page, you set up a really simple control panel and it can be accessed locally if people are on the network. You can expose it on the public internet, you know, behind some strong login credentials. And somebody can just be anywhere. They can be at their home. They can be in the office. They just go to, you know, controlpanel.myinstallation.com. And there it is, the login to control the installation. No if, answer, but, no team viewer, no worrying about what system they're on. They can just control it anywhere. You know, they have control of the properties. If it's a building manager, just some operator, maybe it's a team of people. Maybe five people need to manage an installation instead of having to worry about five computers needing to be able to get touch designer UIs up and running. You just make one web page and everyone can access it. No issues. So I think that's a really huge one is people can access the web from anywhere. Now, something that plays on top of that as well is that web pages can be viewed on anything. You know, if we're going back to this idea of like, well, if we made a UI and touch designer, the system running it also kind of needs to be able to run touch designer. All of a sudden that means mobile phones are gonna have trouble unless we then make a whole other mobile application for it. Tablets aren't gonna be able to run it. Even a lot of older laptops won't be able to run it. Um, it creates a lot of issues where then you have to start worrying about the hardware as well. Whereas with the web, you don't have to worry about hardware. Almost any kind of user interface that you'll put together in the web, not only is it going to run on basically every laptop with any major browser made in the last couple of years. Probably even, internet, let's be real, even probably an Internet Explorer or Edge, your UI will run just fine in the web. Not only that, it can run on iPhones, Android devices. People can just be remote and they hop on, you know, as long as they're on the network or if it's publicly accessible, they hop on and view that user interface right on their mobile. If they're on tablets, it can work fine. 
you know, the web is crazy. You can view the web on anything. And a lot of these interactive web components and frameworks that are made are also made to be able to run on anything. And that's one of the really interesting parts of the internet. So then my third big thing is that web frameworks make building complex user interfaces very easy. And when you start thinking about this and we go back to example, if, if we made this user interface fully in touch designer for managing it, we're basically, we're at the limit of, we're at the, well, not the limit, what's the word? I don't know the word, but we basically have to use widgets or we have to use our own UI kits that we build from sliders, buttons, containers, and these kind of things. That's, that's all we really have access to. I mean, there's a couple of folks who have made some nice UI kits, but from what I've seen, those are more performance-based and not so much operation-based or kind of information-based because a lot of these UIs are going to need charts and graphs to show the uptime of the system, maybe some way of visualizing a schedule. And the time you have to spend to build that yourself might be actually a quite costly endeavor, especially, for example, a lot of these permanent installations, they want to have some ability to schedule playlists over the course of a week. And they want to say, well, at Tuesday at, at 12 p.m., do this. And Wednesday at 2 p.m., play this specific asset. And lunchtime on Thursday, that's garbage day, you know, put this asset on the screen that tells people empty your trash cans, please. You know, if you were going to build a, a UI element in Touch Designer to, to make an interface that was easy to use, clean, and looked good, that did all that functionality, I imagine that's going to take quite a bit of time. But that's not the case with the web because the web has been building all these frameworks for a long time. You know, whether you want to make a graph that just shows some data points over time, maybe some kind of uptime monitor. I mean, I bet you could just go import d3.js, give it a little bit of data, and out comes a beautiful graph that can be seen again from anywhere in the world, if it's public or from any device, whether it's a mobile phone or a tablet or a laptop. And you don't have to stress too much about having to build, you know, it's like that blog post we said about raising goats. You don't have to raise the goats on this one. You basically just use what exists for the web. And, you know, D3.js is a good example for all the data visualization stuff, but there's tons of UI frameworks. There's tons of templates you can get online for admin dashboards that make it really easy to spin up something that looks good, has all the features the client wants, makes them happy, is easy to use, easy to access, and you don't have to worry about any of the hardware. So that's kind of my big thought process when it comes to why it's interesting. And not only why it's interesting, but why it's almost necessary. Because if you are not going to use the web, I feel like you're just digging a hole that later you have to come and hope nobody falls in. And on this point of how might you approach this, because you know we mentioned here Cable's GL or Node Red, I've seen a spectrum of strategies for actually implementing this. And I think that's a good thing because that means that you have flexibility and options when it comes to how you want to set this up. So for example, maybe on one side of the spectrum, I've seen WordPress installations that have been heavily modified, a little bit of custom you know, PHP so that all of a sudden there's a custom post type that's related to either media assets or playlists. So you know, the, the client probably already knows how to use WordPress a little bit. They can just hop into this WordPress admin. And then from there, they can create new playlists, make posts. And then on the touch designer side, it can be pretty easy to just scrape the WordPress database or you know, have WordPress export its database of, of information. And then you kind of just read that with some Python. I've seen that kind of thing on one side of the spectrum. You know, Moving down the spectrum, Node Red, I think, is a really interesting thing as well that we're excited about, You know, just as excited as we are for Notch. I think Node Red is kind of the web equivalent of Notch that could be a really strong tool because you can build a really simple front end quickly, have that connected to touch designer in a matter of minutes. And I think that's a hard proposal to beat. I know Richard Burns has made a couple of YouTube videos about Node-RED and even myself when, when talking with Matthew Reagan a couple of times about Node-RED. You know, he's loving it and also excited about it. I'm loving it and I'm excited about it. When you got this many pros excited and loving the thing, I think it's a good sign. And the fact that it's node-based, I mean, if you haven't seen Node Red before, I'd highly recommend. It's just N O D E dash R E D. And it's basically a node based environment where you can you know, program little web interfaces and then have those connect directly to Touch Designer over WebSockets or a TCP connection or just sending UDP commands. It's all super easy. Then I think you keep stepping down this spectrum. And I think the next thing is a custom front end. 
And this is something I've actually done quite a number of times. Not that I've built the web front end myself. If you saw me on the Twitch stream yesterday, I'm not a web developer by any stretch, but the idea that you can just hire a web developer, any run of the mill web developer will be able to build a really quick admin dashboard or front end for you, especially if they grab a template that costs maybe 20, 30 bucks. Basically, they're just piecing it together and hosting it somewhere. And all they then have to do is either create some kind of JSON endpoint so that your touch designer system can go to you know, mycontrols.myinstallation.com forward slash endpoint. And all of a sudden you get a JSON dictionary with all of the information from the dashboard, what controls have changed since the last time you checked it. And you could do something like just run this on a recurring check every few seconds. And for most people, they won't notice that this isn't like some real time connection because they're going to click a button in the UI and one or two seconds later, the effect is going to propagate down to the system. That could be a really easy way. And if, if you do have a good web developer, you can even build that up with WebSockets, Socket.io, um, any of these kind of persistent connections, even a TCP connection locally between your touch designer system and the web server can give you that immediate feedback if, if you're looking for that kind of thing. And to be honest, for a lot of web developers, that's not a hard thing to do. So it's not going to be expensive. It's going to come out looking good. And the clients are going to enjoy that kind of thing. Then on the farthest side of the spectrum, I've seen even some examples of touch designer apps that are hosting up their own web page using something like a, a web server dat, and it works. I've seen it work, but it seems like it is more difficult than I would enjoy. And also one of the issues with doing that is that it only works if you are also the web dev. So if you're the web developer and you're the touch design developer, great, you just work in one environment and you can prop up your website. But if you are not the web developer, you're only the touch design developer and you have to bring somebody else in to be the web developer. Now, not only are you dealing with your touch designer stuff, but you're also having to troubleshoot why their web stuff maybe isn't working inside of the touch designer implementation of your server. And it's not like you can just say, oh, well, here's the touch designer app, like make it work web dev because they don't know anything about touch designer. So I think that that approach could work, especially if you're on the more ex explorative side and you want to just use Touch Designer as your all-in-one toolkit and have it be a web server. But I think for most people, that's probably not the right approach. And you know, we also mentioned Cables GL, which I think is a, a really interesting tool. I haven't dived too deep into it yet, but the folks that I have seen getting into it really enjoy it. They were mentioning it's very similar in nature to Notch and Touch Designer, where you have these nodes in the browser. And they're kind of creating these GL, like GLSL, GL scenes. And then you can write your own custom shader code if you want on top of that. And you have all these helper functions in the form of nodes. So I think that one could also be a, an interesting avenue to, to go down cables.gl if you haven't checked that one out. But that's kind of my two cents on web front ends. Not only are they interesting, I think they're almost a necessity at this point, especially on larger and larger projects, because the larger a project gets, the more demands you're going to have from the client. And most of those demands are going to be in relation to familiarity. You know, clients don't want you to make a whole crazy Rube Goldberg style machine for them to learn and use. They know how to use the internet. They know how to use the browser. They know what a chart's supposed to look like. They know how to click buttons in the web. They know how to access stuff on their iPhone. They know how to log into stuff. That's kind of what they want to see at the end of the day. And if you give them something completely different, it may be great for some reasons. Maybe even the client likes the look of it and it's custom and all that kind of stuff, but they might have trouble using it. So I think you can avoid a lot of those things by turning to the web when it comes to control panels. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.